Right, and contrary to hopes, there's been a tangible rebound, as Hoa mentioned, in daily infections here in the country. And the question now is, will such spikes derail our plans to move beyond pandemic-related restrictions? Well, to answer that question and more, Kim Yun Sing joins me now. Yun Sing, welcome. Thank you for having me. So, are we looking at a shift from the government uh, in light of the recent rise in cases? Well, it doesn't seem like it for now. Health authorities said Wednesday that they're currently drafting up a plan that in a comprehensive plan that could see the return of normal routines. And it closely resembles those we enjoyed before the pandemic. They will announce the plan within this month. Speaking of returning to normal, Jamshir Baseball Stadium here in Seoul opened its doors to live spectators for the first time in 104 days. People who've been fully vaccinated for at least two weeks had to show their proof of vaccination at the gate to enter. All visitors had to be fully vaccinated and the stadium was only allowed to operate at 30% of its capacity. Right, that must have delighted sports fans here. Meanwhile, Yansing Singh, I hear authorities are also looking to expand the scope of their booster campaign. Yes, that's right. The Korean government has decided to make more people eligible to receive booster shots. Health authorities announced Tuesday that people who've been vaccinated outside the country can also sign up to get their boosters here in Korea. So this may be relevant to many people who are tuning in right now. For most people, they will get their booster shots six to eight months after being fully inoculated. But those who are immunocompromised, it's recommended that they get the booster shots two months after their most recent shot. They can also start getting their booster shots from the start of November. Right. Yansung, before we move any further, do you tell us a bit more about people who are considered immunocompromised? Well, earlier this week, the government defined the following groups of people as being immunodeficient. They include patients with acute leukemia, lymphoma, multiple myeloma, bone marrow fibrosis, and solid cancer, among others. And people who've gotten a stem cell transplant within the last two years or who are still being treated with immunosuppressant drugs two years after the procedure are also eligible to get the booster shot from next month. I see. Elsewhere, Yan Seng, I hear authorities in the U.S. are further exploring the option of cross-inoculation, if I may, to further booster campaign. Uh, exactly. The U.S. FDA is expected to allow a mix-and-match approach for booster shots later this week. Especially for people who've gotten the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, that means people in the U.S. can get a booster that is of a different vaccine type than the jabs they received previously. This move has been backed by a recent study that recorded a 76-fold rise in antibody levels for people who received a single dose of Johnson & Johnson and followed it up with a Moderna booster. Moderna boosters showed the sharpest increase of antibody levels compared to the people who've gotten the Pfizer or Johnson & Johnson booster. The results of the study, however, are only preliminary and reflect short-term findings from a small sample size. So it doesn't conclusively prove that this mix and match approach is necessarily better, but this move does provide room for greater flexibility. Currently, the FDA has only given the green light to Pfizer boosters in certain populations that are considered high risk, including people who are 65 and over. But this impending decision by the FDA could make tens of millions more Americans eligible for extra shots by the end of this week. I see. Well, broader protection for the public then. All right, Yun Seng, thank you for now. Stay with us for the extended talk.